on a chilly November evening. Fog rolling in off the harbor, nothing new. There's the sound of the heavy bag. Just a second. As he disappears into the backdrop. It is an early cold. It's November of 1931. And not much has been happening as far as the newspapers are concerned. But all across America, the war against the gangs has only been getting worse. The violence has been escalating. And the media, when they do talk about it, it's to glamorize and glorify the criminal element, the completely false representation that these are Robin Hoods, you know, robbing from the rich. They're normal, they're normal men. Working right? Joes. Working Joes, just like you and me, and you know, society <laughs> has let them down, the fat cats have let them down, and so they're taking matters into their own hands. Uh, but the matters that they take into their own hands are guns, bullets, bombs, and the business that they're doing is the business of death. As they fight over territory, fighting with each other, but there's so much collateral damage. Agents of the Treasury Department, such as yourself, have been tasked to come up with ways, any way possible, to curb this tide of violence. In Boston, that means trying to figure out some way to bring down the O'Shaughnessy's. Big mobsters like Mickey, the fist O'Shaughnessy. His proclivity for violence and murder by his own hands are possibly only eclipsed by his capacity to fall in love and breed children out of the holy bonds of matrimony and wedlock that mean a lot to his, you know, hard beating Catholic heart. Mickey, of course, is not the head of the O'Shaughnessy family, but he is very much the face. He is the target. He's the one that the newspapers love. Is he known as a trigger man? Has he ever had his finger on the button? If he's coming for you, he's going to beat you to death. So he's more of a physical guy. He's not of let the bullets fly. Yes. Okay. Which is not to say that there aren't gunsels and, and various mechanics in the O'Shaughnessy outfit. Yeah. But Mickey is known as a, a stand up guy, a man's man. Right. And there are many stories told of the of the men he's killed with a blow of his fist. Of course, no one will swear to that in a court. <laughs> They'll only swear that they saw him in mass. So as a treasury agent in Boston with an entrenched and large, well-organized, seemingly untouchable family-based smuggling mob, mostly focusing on weapons and alcohol. 
how do you see yourself as a treasury agent? Well, given my understanding of the books, I'd definitely be interested in trying to figure out, you know, their operation from what they've got on paper, what can't be seen on paper. Really taking a look at how they're probably trying to defend themselves with intimidation, uh, who they're putting their thumbs on currently, like who's their biggest rival right now that they've had the most trouble with, who is they just recently tried to, to squash. Anybody on the fringes as far as smuggling goes, they're dealing in weapons. You know, run any information I can as far as the vehicles, because we still got plates and licenses to take a look at, see who's got ownership, do the do the shoe leather work as it is to just get the uh, the baseline information on them. On the booze, uh, try and find out, you know, what dippers are taking part at the speakeasies, if they're known to frequent certain places, uh, try and find somebody on the outside who's not affiliated but frequents their uh, establishments. Somebody who I might be able to dig up some information on and maybe put a finger on. As kids, our mothers told us that if we did what we were told, stayed out of trouble and looked to good men and women as role models to better ourselves, we could achieve the American dream. It's hard not to wonder now as the drought eats the heart out of the country and the dust delivers black blizzards and poor men beg for food while rich men fall from the sky. Did they know they were lying? Broken families, broken dreams, broken promises, moments of charity, holding off starvation for another day so that suffering can carve deeper marks in the rag-clad children of destitute parents cowering in confusion in the shadows of well-heeled shot callers for the gangsters and politicians with the police taking money from both to keep the peace. her nose clean. Keep it to the grindstone. Keep it out of others' business. The words of our mothers echo down the streets lined with ragged folk with tin cups praying for soup. Can anyone turn this free fall into flight? Is there an answer out there that brings sense to madness? Or do we keep swimming our way toward Asculum? On a cold, frosty November evening, with fog rolling in off the harbor, which is nothing new. In the back room of a sweaty, smelly, moldy basement boxing gym. It's the sound of the heavy bag being pummeled in the back, speed bags running in the front, and of course, lots of men running their mouths and doing nothing, milling around in the middle. Mm -hmm. And mostly what they're talking about tonight 
is the incredible shiner on the face of Steve Allwell. Steve Allwell is an accountant. <laughs> and for Steve, not all is well. And he tried to lie about the Shiner, how he got into it, right? How he put up his dukes and, and fought like he was trained in the club, but nobody bought it because it's Steve Allwell. Is he got a rep for being a bit of a pushover? He's intimidated by the speed bag. You can yell at him all night long to keep his hands up, right? But he just doesn't, he just doesn't get it. Okay. It's, so it's amazing that he makes it to the boxing club <laughs> each week. Does he always seem scared when he comes in here? Like he's too intimidated to be part of the group? Definitely too intimidated to spar or do anything other than hold a bag or give encouragement or get someone a towel, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. So while I'm listening to these guys uh, kind of jeer at him, he's skipping rope, uh, I'll kind of wrap it up, uh, set my gear off to the side, collect a towel, kind of make my way over to where uh, these guys are kind of gathered around him a little bit. And once they start to, to, to back away, uh, kind of ease off of him, you know, I'll just kind of try and uh, catch a look in it, look straight in his eye. Is he got a, is it just a, a straight black eye or is it a total like right on this, you know, cheekbone? Does it look like he took it hard in the face, you know, on the side or, he can't. He can't open the eye. It's all swollen up. It's a mouse. Oh my god! You know, oh, okay. it's okay. turn purple. Looks like you took one pretty hard to the puss. I'll throw I, gave, I gave as good as I got. I kind of. I'll put up my hands, Steve. Steve, don't. You don't got to explain it to me. How is he? Pretty young. Yeah, a year or two younger than you. All right. Look, Steve, you come in here every week and all you're doing is holding the bag. You got to be able to put your hands up. What'd you do to get the shiner anyway? You throwing some weight around? Weight you don't really have a lot to throw around? No, man, you 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 know you know me better than that. I I I I'm not causing trouble. Well, you got to cause some trouble to get smacked like that. Let's sit on the bench, Sean. Come on, Steve. Let's let's have a seat real quick. Because he's he's looking at everybody and like even though they've kind of drifted off you know, to, to finish their own workouts. He's just worried about being overheard. So he, he goes over to the bench with you, but he's still got his one good eye on on everybody who might overhear. Don't worry about it. If something's going on, you're not here to be a stoolie, okay? Just fess up. Just between you and me, that's all that's here on this bench. I, I do the books at a number of places around town. I make a pretty decent living, although it's getting, it's getting harder these days. People think they can do their own books, which they should not do. I, I work at the auction house. 
And maybe you saw in the paper over the last couple of days, they've been talking about how it was robbed. And there are these, the case. these books were stolen. Books. Yeah. Three books were listed as being for sale. But there are only two books marked coming into the auction house. And and it it really was robbed. You know, they they broke in and, and cracked the glass and they, they killed the guard and but the, the file listed that three books were stolen, but only two books had ever been there. Well, who's in charge of the auction? Well, you know, it's a it's a family business like like anything else, you know, and but it would have been my signature on the books, right, for the insurance claims and and that stuff and you know i just i i couldn't sign it so because you couldn't put your name on a piece of paper that's why you got the shiner well that's why i got fired i got the shiner to convince me to never talk about it This sounds like a gap. Who's going to be stealing some books? I don't. I don't know. I've never even seen the books. They're like, you know, fancy ancient books from Europe or something, and you know, they're leather bound and pretty, pretty big according to the manifest. You know, each is like more than a foot, you know, in in, in, in length and really thick and. But like nothing special about them, not like not like gems or gold or or anything, just leather and and paper. So more like something you see in a museum. Right, you know, like yeah, like stuff they'd force us to read in school, you know, like Latin and stuff. So I suppose you can read Latin. Mr. Harvard guy. Hey, Steve. Just because my family's got a little bit of money. But speaking of school, where'd you go to school? You're out of a job right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of a job. And I did not go to Harvard. I mean, that's okay. I tell you what, maybe I could put in a good work for you, word for you with the family. You know, uh, Good accountants are always good to have on stat. And maybe we could somehow get you something to work on commission for, even if it's not permanent. You're not laying flat in your back in the alley, are you? No, I'm, I mean, what kind of accountant would I be if I couldn't, uh, you know, squirrel some away for the winter? I'm just worried that this winter's going to go on forever, you know? But you if, get to go look you... at these guys. Uh, yeah, I, it's cold. Yeah, I buy. I, I hear you. But did you get a good look at these guys who gave you the shiner? Where are they at? Oh yeah, I, I know exactly who they are. Um, yeah, they uh, they had an Irish lilt to their voice, uh, Mister Thornton. You don't got to call me Mr. Thornton, okay? Well, if, if you're going to be you know, promising me a job, it's not like I can go around calling you Alex at the office. I, I haven't promised anything yet. I just said I would put in a good word for you, okay? Well, I don't run the company, and even though my dad and family really want me to lean that way, I'm not exactly a books type guy. Do you really feel comfortable talking about this here? Maybe we should meet no. somewhere else, a little bit more private. Where would where would that be? 
Well, I could give you the name for my address. There's a coffee shop not too far from campus. I don't think uh, people of the nature that you're talking about would kind of frequent that neighborhood. No, they definitely don't drink coffee. <laughs> Sound I'm good? only tell I'm only telling you this because uh, I get the feeling that uh, you don't like them any more than I do. Well, world seems like it's kind of gone rotten from the inside. That's for sure. But uh, yeah. it'll give you a chance to kind of get your head together. I got to swing by the house real quick and. I can meet you there for coffee. I'll bring some photos with me. Maybe you might be able to pick somebody out. All right. And uh, I'll bring I'll bring my copy of the books. Your copy? Yeah, it's a habit I I picked up because sometimes you know you go to a place every week and the numbers change when you're not there. Hmm. I'd appreciate that. See okay, you in a fiber. Then. Okay. You know, he trundles off toward the, the showers. He's not throwing a punch all evening. He's not jumped a rope all yeah. evening. He's done nothing but, but talk. He's going off to the showers to get cleaned up after his... After his holding the bag for someone. Yeah. So I'll... Uh, I'm not going to bother showering, but I am going to swing by... Uh, try and pick up some photos from the house of uh, some of the local clowns. Maybe one of them might be in a photo that he could identify. And uh, I'll make a little bit of a note about Steve and these books. Uh, toss it in the the door tray so I don't forget about it when I come back. <laughs> And then head down to the coffee shop to meet him. Okay. So he is there and he has, you know, this beat up leather satchel. He looks cold and he's just ordered a coffee. And uh, he's enjoying the, the little bit of heat that's in the coffee shop. So tell me about these books. If you say that the, the auction house is a family run business, family got ties yeah but i think they have ties more in your part of town but even then it's still not according to the books looks like it's on the up and up you say these numbers change from time to time well not so much not so much with this establishment as you know some of the others that i that i work for you got copies of their books? I keep copies of everything. The uh, the auction house, I get the feeling, is a way for some rich families to keep looking rich, even though everybody's tightening their belts these days. Uh, everybody likes to see stuff they own changing hands. It makes you look like you're keeping up with the Joneses. Something like that, I guess. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the. Uh, sometimes I feel like the descriptions of the items are pretty wonderful. Like they're over exaggerating. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not a rich guy. I didn't grow up in a rich guy house. But. Uh, yeah, I, I sometimes wonder about some of these uh, jewel encrusted thises and gold plated doses, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But I, these books, I kind of uh, understand what you're saying. These books, I think they caught my eye first because uh, the family is the Gavigans. And, you know, if there's one family in all of Boston that still has all their money and is not worried about anything, is putting on a good front for the rest of us, and, you know, uh, it's the Gavigans. And uh, I thought it, 
I don't know. It just, it's, it struck me as strange, you know, like the, the older brother, Edward, I haven't really seen him in the paper much the last couple of years, but Albert Gavigan, he's, you know, he's, uh, he's a bookworm with a silver spoon in his mouth. You know, I, when I saw his name connected to these books, I thought how, how, how strange, you know. Well, I mean, if he's a bookworm and he's got money to throw around, maybe he doesn't have trouble importing books from Europe. But you say there was three. But I don't know why he of... would. I don't know why he would get rid of them. Like I don't know why he would auction them off. He would just keep them, wouldn't he? You would think that's that's that was my thought. I thought he would just keep them. But anyway, yeah, they were listed. But like I said, only two were actually delivered. But three were so quoted as being stolen. Right. The three were quoted as being stolen. Three were on the, the listing for the auction. And that's the other strange thing. The auction that they described uh, didn't have any associated staff payments. So they held an auction, but the auctioneer wasn't paid. The guards weren't paid. The cleaning crew weren't feel like no one was was paid so it made me think like there wasn't really an auction kind of sounds like they're laundering the books just like you had launder money yeah but why would you act this is where it gets weird to me still why have any books if for a fake auction well you could show that they're real they're listed Obviously, you might have felt uncomfortable about signing off on a fraudulent insurance claim. They're stolen, so to speak. They've gone missing. Oh, I see what you mean. They brought the books in after. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, show maybe. you got an option for the public, but then no listing for something that's silent, right? Yeah. But. somebody actually broke in somebody actually stole these two books and and you know this part hasn't appeared in the paper yet but they they killed a guard and they worked one up really really badly the guard they worked up i'm assuming he wasn't shot Sounds more like you're leaning towards telling me that he might have been beaten or stabbed. Not not stabbed, but um, he uh, apparently it it was like he had fallen like a long way, like fifty, sixty feet. Uh, but he was, you know, this, this all took place on the ground floor. Hmm. They found him all, they found him all broken. He's in the hospital. He's, he's still alive. I don't know if he's going to make it. I don't know if he's going to make it. I kind of start reaching into my uh, inner breast coat and start pulling out some photos. These guys that, this guy that might have roughed you up a little bit. I kind of start spreading the photos out on the table, you know, in front of him. You see him in any of these? Uh, he says, I don't know if he's in any of your pictures, but the, the guy who gave me this, he's, his name is Rory O'Shaughnessy. Not the oldest son of the fist, you know, Mickey O'Shaughnessy, but uh, he's he's the one people talk about, you know, he's the one that gets all the girls. He's got the nice cars. He's always got money for uh, 
fancy new haircut and you know shoes that kind of stuff his shoe leather could pay my rent for a month uh, take a look at the photo so i get a good view of the guy's face start tucking him away where's this guy at that you said might not live oh he's in you know he's in the hospital it's like boston med yeah yeah okay look steve i i, I can't really say that you got much that i can go on this guy here i can take a look at him this rory it's a name i'm familiar with but i've not really seen the guy's face very much you don't go to yeah, the right can... dance clubs i guess I, i've never been known as the best dancer so i do better dancing in the ring yeah the Gavigan's family, though, you don't think they have any connection? Like they would want the book stolen? I always thought that, I mean, I like anybody else, I wonder how they made their money. You know, and I know that they, they're in shipping, and that's always suspicious. But I just, I always thought they were on the up and up. Do they got a lot of boxes that come in that aren't always on the book? Well, I, I don't do their books, do I? That's some fancy firm like uh, like the Thornton family firm that does uh, does books for those guys. Yeah. I know the situation. Not exactly the most comfortable all the time either. Anyway. What do you plan on doing? Are you... You gonna make out of here? You gonna stick around? Well, I'm not ready to become a hobo just yet. I'm uh, I'm gonna go talk to some of the people I've worked for the longest and see if they'll consider not uh, letting me go for fear of retribution uh, by uh, concerned Irish citizens and. Uh, and I'll kind of hope that you call me with a job offer. I can definitely try. I'll pull out a card and give it to him uh, after writing my name on the back of it, a small note saying, uh, you know, something along the lines of, uh, please consider for a prospect and my initials. All right. Say, so if, if you don't hear from me in a couple of days, Take the card and go by the by the shop, okay? I'll, I'll do that. I'll, thank Depending you. on how things go, it could get kind of busy for me. And he slides the notebook he has from the auction house. And none of this is official, but these are the these are the real numbers. And the invoice numbers for the two books coming in, and you know all the costs associated with that, and mm -hmm. uh, and the insurance claims. It's a it, it's all in there names and dates and stuff i won't take any more of your time he says and gets up as he's kind of taking a walk away i say steve just take care of yourself okay keep your nose clean stay out of sight if you have to i will <laughs> I, I definitely smile and shake my head uh I'll, he goes uh, out I'll take into the, the night. <laughs> I'll take the book, uh, you know, go back to the house since it's relatively close to where I'm at. Uh, give it a quick perusal just to see if anything, you know, kind of jumps out outstanding. Look for these entries surrounding, you know, these books, the shipment, this auction uh, in particular, since that's what he's kind of focusing on. And then potentially if there's any other names in the book, uh, barring that, I'm going to hold on to it for the next day, 
uh, take it by the family's business and see if I can't convince an accountant to take a little dive on it for me if they would, or tell me what they know about the Gavigan family and see who is running their books, if not us, uh, and get kind of an idea from that perspective. All right. Well, you know, when you get home with the book, you know, the house is quiet. And the really tiny, you know, numbers all divided up. Neatly yeah, organized. Rows. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty much laid out like he like he reported. It obviously caught his attention. And this story was in the newspapers, you know, there was a, a drawing, a sketch of, uh, of a book, you know, big manuscript with, not manuscript, but a big, a big book with a folio, they describe it, you know, oversized yeah. folio with leather buckles and uh, hold it all together, you know, practically as long as a, as a fellow's chest, you know, monstrously thick. So three of these volumes, incredibly valuable, you know, I was talking about in the, in the newspaper and how they were, how they were stolen and, and uh, a brief statement from Albert Gavigan expressing dismay that, uh, that these things were, were stolen and, and, uh, you know, faith that the police could recover them in, in timely fashion, you know, that kind of stuff. I'll kind of dig around through the rags that I still got laying on the table and see if I can't find the newspaper and, you know, pull the article from it if I got it, uh, collect it together into a file and set it on top of the accountant's book. Uh, going back to the the day tray by the door, grab the note, uh, add to it, you know, uh, stop by office for recommendation, Steve, and then... Uh, stop by the department uh, for O'Shaughnessy kind of put two lines underneath there that way I you know one try and make the recommendation see if I can't help Steve find something a little bit more stable a little more trustworthy and then make sure that I understand that my next step one of my biggest next steps is to really start digging on the O'Shaughnessy's and see you know, kind of how this is connected, pull out one of the photos that, you know, has Rory's face in it, give it a circle with a pen. And uh, he is a handsome I, devil. Yeah, well, he definitely looks like somebody I probably wouldn't want to face myself in a ring compared to my own size. Uh, I also put the initials S.A. for Steve Atwell, reminding me that this is the guy who gave him the shiner. Uh, kind of collect this stuff together, uh, measure out some coffee, get the water on the on the stove so it's ready to go when I wake up in the morning, and okay. pack it in for the night. So the next morning comes, no one kills you in your sleep. So that's a good sign. Yes. <laughs> With the cold light of morning. Do you want to go to the treasury office first or do you want to go to the accounting office first? Family go to the accounting or office. business? Okay. Go to the accounting office first. So, you know, you're greeted nicely on the, on the way in, uh, but eventually hit the barrier of the confidential secretaries. Yeah. Well, good morning, Alex. Good morning, Nancy. It's nice to see you today. It's nice to be seen. So I've got a question. Is there somebody I could have helped me out on something? Well, I don't know. What was it that you were looking to be helped out with? Well, maybe later on you could teach me the fox, the foxtrot, but, you know, for now, when I pull the book out and set it on the table... I've got some numbers I'd like to have somebody take a look at. Well, uh, maybe one of the junior accountants would could be persuaded to take a What is this about? 
I've got a friend who's a little worried about the business he's working for. And uh, even though nothing's been charged, and I kind of smile, you know, I'm not the best with numbers. I don't spend all my time at a desk. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, what is it that they say that, you know, the, the blood, the blood runs true. But I, I'm not sure that anyone will want to dip their hands into another firm's business or deal with anything that might have possible illegalities. Oh, I understand. I mean, this isn't anything official. It's entirely above table, though. So why wouldn't why wouldn't you take this to the to the Treasury Department? I mean, is this is this something like? really salacious Nah, it's nothing dark and dirty i just want to make sure that i understand exactly what i'm looking at before i really present anything oh i see you're trying to get a promotion a, a man's got to move up even in these hard times right now and you can't do it by your hands alone sometimes you got to rely on your wits and sometimes it's who you know and who you tap. So she kind of scoops it under her files and says, you just leave this with me and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, make sure that someone who understands it can present it to you in the, the right way. Okay. I've got a couple of entries marked in there. The one specifically I need, would need somebody to look at. So, okay. Oh, and as I'm kind of walking away, I'll turn back and say, there's a guy coming by later, maybe in a couple of days, who's a good friend, a little bit hard on his luck. He's an accountant, but trying to help him out. Another hard luck case? He's not really, well, <laughs> I kind of smile. Let's just say, don't let his, let his appearance uh, fool you. The guy's got quite a brain. But he's not exactly the most physical kind of guy. Oh. Well, I'll keep an eye out for a, a bewildered accountant. Oh, he's kind of bewildered. Don't forget to have him ring me at the department. I will do that. The number's still the same. Thank you, Nancy, as I'm walking away. Have a wonderful afternoon, Agent Thornton. I shake my head. Uh, not going to get used to that. Head to the Treasury. Okay. So there, you know, the, the small unit that's been set up in Boston... As the as the nature of a, a bullpen about it, you know, peeling paint, slowly spinning fan. Not because you need it, because it doesn't turn off. You know that that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, the walls are covered with all sorts of of notes and and about various active cases and. And uh, everyone looks haggard and tired. Suits are rumpled. People are trying to look neat, you know. And there's a heated discussion going on about the Red Sox when you roll in. Okay, so in my nice press suit <laughs> compared to the rest of these guys, as I'm hanging up my coat and taking off my fedora, I'll say, not to interrupt your Red Sox discussion there, but what do we got on the O'Shaughnessy's? I what do we got on all... the O'Shaughnessy's, or what can we prove about the O'Shaughnessy's? What do we got to... on the O'Shaughnessy's? I'm not looking at anything proven yet. He I goes, just those three her... filing cabinets over there. I'll wander over to them. And that one over there. Start kind of digging through some files. They got any known connections with auction houses? Auction houses? Shops? Are you talking about those books? Yeah, the books. I'm kind of digging through. What else we got? Anything specific on Rory here? I want to know more <laughs> about this guy. 
wouldn't wouldn't I love to be able to send him up the river? <laughs> Just kind of start pulling files from the cabinets, anything I can dig out. Uh, Mostly what we've cared about in the past. Uh, it says a heavy set older gentleman who keeps talking about retirement. The classic. Yeah. And uh, he wants everyone to call him Bill. His name, of course, is William, but he wants to be called Bill. And his surname is Rayner, Bill Rayner. He says, look, what, mostly what we've cared about over the last several years is their smuggling concerns, because that's, that's the big ticket item, isn't it? They've got supposedly... You know, allegedly, they've got connections back to the old country, and they're bringing in real, you know, real Irish whiskey. So but they got prices is, on the pier then? Well, they used to until about two weeks ago. When they, dear Alex, my head interested. were rousted. They were rolled out of there like a cheaply infested rug. By who? Well, this, is a, this is a brazen bunch. Get this. Right. So these these warehouse buildings, you know, like we've, we've never been able to touch them. We've done raids. There's nothing there, right? Just housewares or dried fish or whatever, right? Not a drop even of medicinal alcohol, right? No rubbing alcohol, no wood alcohol, nothing. <laughs> but the, these warehouses, you know, they've got the O'Shaughnessy name right on them. And a lot that don't, a lot that have other people's names on them, but everybody knows which family really runs them, right? So just as brazen as anything, all these main warehouses get painted, right? Brand new paint, new doors, locks on the doors, right? All kinds of repairs and, and in giant letters for everyone to see. Morgan, it says. Anywhere there had been an O'Shaughnessy, there is now a Morgan. Really? Yeah. Now, your next question will be, who are the Morgans? But the only answer I have is, I have no idea. Anybody been down to the pier lately? You mean like one of us? Oh, well, yeah. Or any one of the cops we got in contact with? There haven't been any reports of the sort of things that you know we investigate but as for the cops a lot of missing persons and not just gangsters just street rubes yeah like yeah it's honestly it's the you know Homeless, destitute, breadline, those types. But quite a few O'Shaughnessy's are uh, currently missing. Including, you were asking about Rory? Yeah. Including his old man. They have been looking for Mickey for a couple of days now. Rory is in quite a state, I'm given to understand. Which, of course, could not happen to a nicer person. I'll smile, still collecting the notes together. 
making sure that I've got uh, Morgan Co. added to the little uh, note that I had started back at the house. Uh, Bill Reiner. I'll put next to that. Taking a look at the map and seeing if there's any kind of connection between where the pier is, where the auction house is. I'm sure we've probably had some territories marked out for the O'Shaughnessy's already. And just kind of taking a look at the map to see, you know, where all this stuff is taking place at in what part of Boston. Uh, turn away from the map. Uh, start digging through and seeing uh, who we have in the police department who might possibly be working on these missing person cases and what precinct they're in, because that'll probably be my next stop. The name that comes up as you go through the files is flagged as very likely being on the payroll of the O'Shaughnessy's. Is it cop? Yeah. Rainer's kind of looking over your shoulders like, yeah, we can't prove anything, but, you know, like he and Rory are the same age. They went to school together. They were altar boys together. I mean, you know, it's just. In the family, more or less. Yeah. So he's been very concerned about the docs and he's been, you know, taking the, the bigger, tougher, less intellectually capable police officers down to the docks with them. So we haven't been getting very good intelligence. Mm. And this guy's name was again? Oh, he's, he's one of the many Malones. One of the many John Malones. But, you know, his details are there in the file. He's Okay. His badge number is precinct. Take all that information down. Uh, when did this all start, these missing persons? Well, that's not a question I thought to ask. Just, you know, it was on the rise. Uh, that was the, the part that, that struck me, but I, I didn't think to, to ask when I spoke to him. That gives me something I can officially assign you. I hold up my hands, you know, well, I'm willing to take the assignment. Well, well, excellent. I hope you in, enjoy your trip down to the precinct and, uh, and be careful. I'll keep my nose clean. Hands on the table. Collect up the notes that I've got, uh, gather my handbag, check my weapons, head down to the car before I, as I'm kind of walking out the door, uh, I'll turn around and with a smile on my face say, if I'm not back in a couple of days, hopefully you don't find me as another body floating in the water. If you're not back tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to fire you. I shrug my shoulders. <laughs> you really think I'm getting paid a lot for being a part of the treasury, don't you? It's not a family business. You don't like it? Go home. I turn around and as I'm walking out, I, 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 I mutter to myself, I'm coming down here because I want to, not because I have to. Head down to the car and I know it's still kind of probably a little bit early in the day, uh, but just kind of skirt the pier a little bit just to see the crowd that's kind of down there early in the day as I'm making my way to the precinct in that area. Okay. Well, you know, with uh, more than 20% of the population out of work, uh, there's an awful lot of signs of visible desperation and poverty Businesses closed, boarded up, uh, the bread lines, the soup kitchens, 
are full to overflowing with people waiting for the next opportunity to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are people walking, you know, with signboards, you know, offering some kind of day work, you know, needing so many men for this kind of labor. So, and, uh, and there are, there's signs of people sleeping in alleyways and, and uh, that sort of stuff. And there is a, a visible police presence, right? Patrolmen walking and, and uh, trying to look neat, but, you know, you know, having met them face to face and close up that their, their uniform shirts are getting threadbare and, and uh, they're not, you know, their uniforms aren't warm enough, their shoes aren't good enough. And uh, yeah. the pressure to take bribes to look the other way is immense on a lot of a lot of officers, which explains all the speakeasies. That map that you looked at is is dotted like it has the pox with known and suspected locations of of speakeasies and other uh, businesses of ill repute. Most of the city has been under the thumb of the O'Shaughnessy's or satellite gangs that pay tribute to the O'Shaughnessy's for years. But from the harbor up several blocks and all of the piers is now under new colors. This is Morgan's. Morgan. When you finally come across John O'Malley, it's as a missing person's report. Wait, this officer himself is missing. And the five officers he took with him. None of them came, came back for duty. None of them went home. None of them are in the houses of ill repute or speakeasies that they're known to frequent. <laughs> so at the, uh, at the precinct, I'll, you know, go to the desk officer and, you know, show him my ID and say, you know, I've been asked to make some inquiries about all these missing people, uh, that there may be, some issues with human trafficking. Can you tell me when all these started? And seeing as how one of your own officers has just recently gone missing. That's right. One no. of our officers has gone missing, and we will be the ones to find him. And if you don't like it, you can take it up with the captain, G-Man. Hopefully you will find him. I just kind of stare at him dumb-faced a little bit. I say, I hopefully you will find him. Doesn't mean I wouldn't be willing to help you with that. I'm not here to take any kind of praise or grandization, but a lot of people have gone missing and it's attracted a lot of attention. I was just wondering if you knew when they might have started. Fits. You think we don't know how to find missing people? You think we don't know how to track missing people? We can track missing people. Look, if you really got some beef to get off your chest, I'm more than willing to hear it. But I'm still not hearing when you think this all kind of really got started. <laughs> a, a, a very large, red-faced like man of the sea kind of guy. The desk sergeant comes around. He says, thanks O'Toole. You've uh, lived up to your family name once again. So how, how can I help you uh, agent officer? Agent, Agent Thornton, is it? Did I hear Treasury? Just Agent Thornton. 
we all kind of work for the same thing, don't we? Oh, uh, well, that's a question for debate, I think. But uh, you were asking about uh, when, missing persons. Yeah. About when do you really think that these all got started? Well, it's difficult to say, you know, because people leave the city and ride the rails looking for work all the time, right? We get lots of people who are reported missing who are probably just in California. But I can tell you that the sheer amount of people who've gone missing with no sign, no trace, no reason, no uh, sense, such as five police officers just last night. That started all about the same time as the O'Shaughnessy's lost the docks to the Morgans. Maybe a little bit before. A couple weeks, a month? How long did that really take? If you believe the streets, it was done in a night. But if we go back a month, that's when the hostility started, I would say. I mean, you won't find anything in the files that says this was the day it started. Uh, we don't have the time or the manpower or the, frankly, the intelligence for that kind of note taking. Can you tell me if, where John went missing? Do you know what his beat was when he went down there? <laughs> Malone's beat, to be honest, is anywhere the O'Shaughnessy's needed him to be. You hearing me? I understand. So he took five very large individuals. And he went down with lots of loud talk about how he was going to rouse some Morgans and find out what was going on so i figure he's looking for the fist but you don't know what part of the docks he might have headed to well there always was this favorite place right which was called o'shaughnessy's a beautiful pier right it lined up the, with the moonlight really nice. Yeah. Got a nice view. And uh, easy, easy steerage. And what the O'Shaughnessy's loved about it, of course, is that the roads to access that area could very easily be blocked off by wide trucks. So if you were importing anything shady, it would take officers with any interest in stopping you quite a while to get to you, at which point, whoo, miracle of miracles, right? Heavens have opened up and scooped up your contraband and hidden it from the heathen bullies. I'd take that so down I would as go, well. I would go there. Actually, I would not go there. Don't go there. I'll give him a bit of a wry smile. Say, I, I, I get your drift. But we've got some cases that might overlap, I think. And one man may attract less attention than a bunch, especially if he doesn't have a loud mouth. Well, yes. And one man could just very easily be made to disappear. This is true. Officer, I want to thank you. My pleasure. You can thank me with a with a fine meal, and uh, and I slide a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> I put a twenty dollar bill on the table. This isn't a kickback. This is just an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. Well, <laughs> my very first one. <laughs> I'll give him a smile and say, "Don't let the feet go flat." 
put the fedora on my hat. It's too late. Uh, definitely going to head back to the house to change. Okay. Uh, kind of stop off uh, at a secondhand store, you know, gather up some street clothes, some, you know, it's definitely something that's not updressed. Uh, and I'll plan on probably taking a cab fairly close to down there. Uh, write a note, leave it on the fridge where I'll be headed. Clean the gun, make sure everything's rocked and ready to go, and then head down to this favorite place. Okay. Well, like no, the probably. officer. Huh? Like the officer intimated, you know, the, you know, the, the agent intimated the whole area looks like it's undergoing urban renewal, you know, new paint, new signs, but what instantly stands out, it doesn't look like there's much in the way of business going on. Hmm. Right. You know, there's ships at piers and there's ships standing off in the harbor waiting for their turns to, to unload and stuff. It looks like business as usual, but it just doesn't feel like business as usual. There's no hustle and bustle down here. Yeah. So as I'm getting closer to this place on foot, uh, this O'Shaughnessy, it is, has it also been redone? Their favorite oh. place? Oh, yes. Fresh paint. You can't smell it anymore, but it's obviously fresh paint. Is it getting any traffic? No, but there are two obvious guards who do not look in any way like dock workers. Right, like they're not dressed for labor. They're nicely dressed. And judging by the piles of cigarettes, this is what they do all day is just stand here how uh crowded is this area not people wise but as far as the tightness There's, of the buildings there are two obvious choke points on the map which mm -hmm. in real life you would not want to come down here for a raid right okay. there's elevated positions with various types of cover where any dedicated gunmen could you know make a real mess of officers trying to enter the area and from the seaside it's not much better this is the one part of the docks where there's this low but you know heavily reinforced seawall okay. arrangement so kind of case in this joint, does it look like there's any approach that may be advantageous? I mean, literally, you can just walk up to it as an individual. You could probably just drive right up to it and, and park. But if they didn't want you to enter, it'd be very easy to, pre to prevent you from getting within blocks of it. Now, this place, this favorite place, is this like a club, like a, or is this it's just a look normal, like a normal warehouse? just a normal warehouse yeah any flops right on, nearby? right on the dock right okay any flops nearby there must be um but you know in your sight line on that street what you're seeing is different types of warehouses like this one uh, for unloading and processing of goods and then other ones for sorting dry goods from from wet goods and you know ice houses and okay and stuff. without one being really close then is there anything i can see that's got a vantage point where i can observe this place from say with a pair of binoculars kind of you know wandering down the street you know i'm dressed as anybody else might be on the street, not maybe nearly as ragged, but I'm not in any kind of finery at all. Right. Uh, carrying a small handbag and and just kind of looking around, you know, above the tops of the warehouses to see if there's anything that could be 
within sight that I could spot this place from? Yeah, there are numerous places. Um, but you may have to go through, you know, gang members to gain access to them. You may not. The building might be mostly empty or it might be, you know, a working warehouse. Oh, OK. All right. All right. Or it might be a front for criminal activity. And they're like, well, excuse me, sir. Why are you wandering into our lair? <laughs> So you've got that feeling, right? You've got that feeling of activation, right? The hair on the back of your neck isn't quite standing up, but something about this whole area feels off in a way that it didn't the last time you were down here. Like last time you were down here, it was docks and there was criminal activity. Now it seems like there's just criminal activity. Okay. So I'm going to canvas this area, you know, pretty well, making my way back from where this new Morgan's favorite place is at to kind of map out in my head a good approach, probably something that uh, I can come down to the seawall side on kind of while away a better part of the day and just kind of every now and then, you know, I'll get a little closer, see if the traffic picks up to it, see if I spot anything interesting coming and going. Uh, but all in all, I'm just going to kind of be, be wandering around down here, trying to stay out of the way, just keep my eyes peeled, not looking for trouble. Well, I know it's a dangerous area, so I, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna work to avoid, you know, and as alone as one guy on his own in an area like this, you know, unless I'm a familiar face, I'm sure I wouldn't be too welcome no matter where I go. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, after so a while, you... <laughs> no, no. Yeah. You're just an unemployed guy sitting around. Unemployed around. guy. After a while, you know, the everything starts to blur together. You know, it's difficult to maintain your attention and look for things that matter. This is so what I'd like you. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do is there's lots of stuff I'm going to tell you about this place. Okay. But what I would like you to do is check your spot hidden for. Me. Blind as that, kind of staring up at the sky. Uh, obviously, I overlooked something. Well, maybe. 86. So, like the reports that you got, there's a lot of repairs going on, right? The O'Shaughnessy's weren't that interested in repainting the buildings or rehanging the doors or, or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And frankly, they were too busy. You know, warehouse doors are usually open and stock is rolling in and out. Piers were in, were in action. But what mostly you see is a lot of people, you know, um, putting glass in broken windows and painting trim, uh, fixing fences, Increasing hinges, uh, fixing the roadways. You know, the roadways are in bad shape, so they're filling in potholes or replacing cobblestones. And right, there's lots of that kind of of work going it, on, as opposed kind of, to. Yeah. Is it kind of a mixture of people, uh, meaning that it's not one ethnic group? You know as many mob organizations right it's a be. it's a so, classic boston arrangement of of people right? okay all right mostly men and mostly late youth to you know middle age okay 
and it's quiet. There are conversations. Uh, there are orders given. There's work being inspected, but there's no singing, no banter, no talk of the Red Sox. Everybody speaking in English. Everybody speaking in English to various degrees of education. Okay. But they're all focused on the work. They're not focused on socializing what people normally do at work. Right. It's nothing like this kind of workplace, right? Outdoor work, heavy physical labor where you need lots of rest breaks or, or you know, switching off, right? Um, or going to fetch some kind of tool or other. Normally there would be banter. There'd be cigarettes being smoked and, and discussions and that stands out as as being absent. These are people seriously working. So maybe it's maybe it's the opportunity to be paid for work. Maybe that's all it is, right? But it's so, weird. It's unsettling. If I you know I kind of maybe dirty myself up a little bit out of sight, you know, not like rolling in the mud, but as someone who's <laughs> been you know unemployed i want to get this disheveled look uh <laughs> yeah i don't think i got anything uh yeah well, there's a one on there uh but try and spot maybe a group of two just a just a duo working on something who may be struggling with a a, a larger dock door uh, you know, on their own. Uh, people who need and, some help. Yeah, yeah people, who, a group of guys who need some help. And kind of shuffle to them uh, as they may be struggling uh, to get this job done and ask them if they need a hand real quick. Looks like you're having a tough time. Okay. I'm just going to uh, check. <laughs> They look at you and then one of them gets a little uncomfortable and the other one steps forward and says, uh, you, uh, you're looking to work. Well, I'd, I'd appreciate having a job, but I see you guys are struggling right now. I just wanted to know if you needed a hand real quick. I mean, if there's a job in it, if I could do a good job helping you now, and if there's a job later, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, there's work and uh, and there's pay. And there's uh, and there's purpose. Ooh, work and purpose. I mean, I, I can appreciate that. I mean, opportunity, I could appreciate that. You, uh, what, what's your background? Well, I've done some carpentry. I'm good with a saw. Okay. Uh, I show on my hands, not necessarily the hands of a deliatant being a boxer as well. Maybe my knuckles are a little bit inflamed probably. You uh, well, yeah. Why don't you uh, why don't you come in uh, with me? I follow him. He's not physically uncomfortable. It's it's like he's incredibly shy. Hmm. So what's uh, what's what's your name? How long have you been out of work? Uh, my name's Troy. 
Troy McAllister. I've been out of work just recently, maybe a couple weeks. Oh, okay. I, uh, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, well, anyway, you don't care about that. So anyway, um, uh, come, come on. So he, he's uh, gesturing for you to follow him into the warehouse. I, I follow him. It's a multi-level affair. Like there's stairway going up to a to an elevated storage area. And then there's this main floor with a high ceiling. But he's okay. wanting to go down a, a flight of stairs. Won't be underground, but it'll be down closer to sea level. Right, so lower than the roadway. Okay. So, you know, come on, come on down. He's he's leading the way and kind of like going down the stairs sideways so he can keep an eye on you. Okay. I am definitely keeping my eyes peeled as, you know, we enter the warehouse. Uh, not giving him the side eye or anything, but generally trying to appear very interested in what, what he's got to offer. Uh, especially when we start making our way down the stairwell, uh, you know, take note if it's an open back, uh, knowing that there have been disappearances down here. This is a dangerous situation I'm walking into. Uh, I am armed. I do only at this time, though, I am going to say that the only thing I am carrying is 32 autos, smaller of the two pistols. Right. And where are you uh, keeping it? I'm concealing that in my boot or lower leg holster probably more comfortable the holster yeah <laughs> to, to the boot yeah. yeah so on your left is this vertical like two by four Flat arrangement work. rough right. cut the stairs are well-worn stone and the right wall is misshapen different size stones mortared together you know but the, the majority of the building is is wood weathered wood and there's a lot of sound of of construction going on any other sources, okay any other sources of light that i can see down here egresses directions that this area takes off in the stairwell itself is lit only by the light from the street okay the daytime light from the street uh, but you're heading toward electric illumination. Okay. So it just goes straight down, like most of the length of the of the building. And then, you know, he, he gets to the end of the stairs and there's a, a brief kind of hard packed mud kind of kind of floor with smaller stones embedded in it. You know. And he he starts going around the corner and gestures, but he's also excusing himself to whoever's you know around that corner or you know excuse excuse me sir i i found someone on the on the street you 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 might want to talk to okay and you know a, a rich cultured but slightly accented voice but a cultured voice it just says you saw him in so I'll, give, I'll give the corner a wide berth. Uh, do I? What's this individual look like? So as you get into a position where you can look back up the stairs, but also into the room, mm -hmm. right? Um, the difference in light isn't so much that uh, it affects your your ability to see, right? But it, there is basically the first thing that catches your eye is this bare bulb, right? Which is right at eye height because the ceiling is quite low. Okay. But there are two individuals seated at a table and they've got ledgers and, and books and that kind of thing uh, in front of them. There's no other furniture in the room, just these, uh, the two chairs that they're sitting in and this rickety table. And there's a bunch of other chairs scattered around, um, but it's not an office or anything like that. It's just a storeroom and this furniture happens to be here. So maybe that's why they're, they're doing this here. They're nicely dressed, right? Good suits. But as soon as your eyes 
drop down from the the bright light of the new bulb. Mm -hmm. What you note is that these finely tailored gentlemen, perfectly clean, you know, perfectly coiffed hair, their faces are tattooed with unusual symbols. Are they native? Are they Caucasian? Are they yes, Caucasian. Okay, sort of tanned. <laughs> okay, like from a, a a life in the sun, but not weathered. You know, not like the the lined, thick skinned face of a dock worker who's you know beaten on by the sun or a sa or the sailors, right? Not like the fishermen. Yeah. Uh, that make up so much of, of Boston life, right? Just tanned. Okay. I keep following the individual as I make a note of this stuff in my head. Uh, right. So he gets about five feet away from the table and he just, he doesn't seem to be able to go any further and he's just gesturing you forward. And, and one man is gesturing to come forward with a very friendly yeah. smile. So it's, Please. I step up to the table. Come in, have a seat, and tell us about your struggles to make it in the world. Well, you know, with uh, everybody losing their jobs, businesses closing down, I mean, I'm not, I kind of shrug my shoulders. I'm not the greatest accountant, but I can run some numbers. I can definitely uh, do my maths. But there are just not enough places that are keeping people like me and, and my level of education higher, you know. I kind of let a little bit of a, a Southie uh, lilt come into my voice to play down my, uh, you know, my upper class upbringing. You know, being... Oh, well, the, you misunderstood Alex, I meant your real struggles. I kind of look at him. What'd you call me? Your name. And he moves one of the ledgers aside very slowly. And beneath it, there's a spread of well-worn cards, large size, not playing cards. Mm -hmm. They've got strange pictures on them, Roman numerals. And he, he taps one. It has sword symbolism on it. This is, is you, Alex, I've been waiting. I thought you'd come yesterday, but here you are today. Okay. I'll straighten up on my seat, stare down at the card, look back up at him. How'd you do that? And I let the full, you know, nature of my voice come through. And I kind of tap the card. This looks like tarot, but not that I've ever seen. I thought this stuff went out of favor back in the, the 1910s. Whoa. True tarot. Can never go out of style. <laughs> So How did I know you were coming? It's destiny. It's fate. You're brought to me on the tide. The tide of discontent and dissatisfaction. Tell me of your struggles and we can end them. And we can set you on the path. To satisfaction.
I'll put my knees on my, uh, put my elbows on my knees, kind of look at the floor and then look up at him. You really want to know about my struggle? I don't understand how humanity can still continue to do things like it does today, like it's been doing all this time, eating itself. The crime, the discontent, the violence, arbitrary violence. I mean, and I kind of, you know, sit back up, hand comes out, you know, I understand an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but when innocent people are dying, it's just hard to deal with. That's really my struggle. So you came here looking for the O'Shaughnessy's? I came here looking for missing people. Uh, what do you think has happened to these missing people? No idea. But everything seems pretty quiet down here. And I kind of look around the room, especially down here. Ah. The gentleman sitting with him is, you know, has his hands folded on the table, almost like he's praying, he has his head down. Mm -hmm. Not like he's asleep or anything, but just politeness or deference. Okay. You have no theory about the missing people? Not that I can establish. I mean, everything has changed down here. So any theory I might have had before, definitely going to have to change. Either the people that were living down here just don't want to be in contact with anybody or working, which it seems like there's a lot of working going on. Yes. Do you, do you approve of the atmosphere you... I don't think whether I approve or disapprove would make a difference. Oh, it you're looks so cagey. You have studied the law. It looks better. It's cleaner. It's more organized. Nothing long, wrong with uh, adding a little beauty to some dinginess down here. Life does kind of seem a like work in progress. Yeah, it does kind of seem like. Everybody's a little cagey down here. They haven't fully awakened to trust in their good fortune. Things have been so bleak. Well, what makes you think uh, that I'm down here potentially looking for fortune? Well, I don't think you're done. You're looking for work or day labor, I think. You're looking to matter? Matter to who? I think first to you, but there's family. You know, the, the sheltering shadow of our parents is still darkness. So what is it I can do for you? Well, I don't have need of a treasury agent. I don't have need of an accountant. Yep. Someone who understands the law, someone who has a, a mind for numbers and for logic, I could use a man like that. It's a lot of mouths to feed here. There's a lot of wages that need to be paid and paid properly and savings accounts to, to build so that the wasteful habits of the past don't become the desperation of the future. And this is all above board. 
The world is bounty. Which work can harvest. Oh, there's nothing more than that. So you don't have a tru- any trouble with me being a treasury agent None. from being a wealthy family. It's pretty obvious you know a lot about me already. I have no problems with you at all other than you have problems with yourself. Kind of thinking about what he's talking about here how much does this sound like recruitment? I mean, I know, like, even at this point, you know, cults are a thing or a potential thing. Uh, Recruitment happens in gangs. Recruitment happens in various organizations. So knowing what I know about psychology, right, how much does this feel like he's actually trying to recruit me? He's saying everything that a recruiter would say. Okay. The problem is that he is hitting those buttons because they're true. Yeah. So he is really out of character, knowing what he's got laying on the table there. Uh, He's obviously got information about me, how he's gotten it. I don't know. But he obviously knows or has some idea what buttons to try and push with me in specific. Is that how this feels? Not like a carnival huckster who's making educated guesses. Yeah. He's hitting it on the number. Yeah. Like he's been sitting here all day waiting for you to come. Or maybe he was sitting here yesterday, too, waiting for you to come. (laughs) I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, (laughs) That's how it feels. Which doesn't make it not true that he's making, you know, a, a persuasive argument intending to capitalize on perceived weakness or or whatever. The question is that you're not able to penetrate at this moment is his motivation. Okay. He looks very patient, doesn't look tired, doesn't look like he wants anything. Um, There is legitimate work going on on the table. They are going through ledgers. They've got writing implements and, and, uh, and whatnot, but Underneath it was, you know, this kind of discarded set of of tarot. Okay. Looking back at it again, I'll ask, so what are the next steps? Well, like any, what's the word you're thinking? With any initiation, it is the revelation of the inner mysteries. Some like it, ostentatious. Pointing to their tattooed faces. Some, not so much. Some need the death of their old life and the resurrection into the new life in order to cut ties with the things that suck them down, the the addictions, the depravities. Some box your door into a new life. Well, I don't have any addictions. I'm definitely not a deviant. I don't know. What do you call the punched in the face over and over again, night after night, like some kind of never-ending punishment. 
bit of a masochist maybe but there's always a contest of will how much can i take before a guy snaps well before one learns to sidestep the fist i've gotten pretty good at that i'll give him a smile did your cards tell you that that in your face <laughs> I've still got some decent looks left. Sure, good. And looks aren't everything. Is this something we're doing now? Or can I get a bite to eat? <laughs> it's no need to do it now. Think on what I've said. Come back when you recognize the truth of it. When the suspicion of your false job surrenders to the calling of your true one. I'll slowly start to stand up. Hold out my hand. He holds out his. So I got my, you got my name, but I never got yours. My name is all over all of these buildings. So you're Morgan. Save you, Morgan. I'll raise the cock and eyebrow. Savior? Xavier, with an X. Xavier. Ah. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, thank you for your candor. And I appreciate your insight. When should I come back? You know what? I'll nod my That's head. your quest for... That's like he's listening, right? Perhaps your quest for... John Malone will bring you back to me. My eyes get a little bit hard. What do you know about Malone? Me? Nothing. Seed can you shall find. I'll start to turn, kind of observing the people in the room, you know, foot turning towards the doorway. I get the feeling I'll be back. A lot more friendly of a receiving than I thought I'd get. He taps a card. It says, Friends, family, the future, maybe happiness. Okay, I'll start making my way back to to the surface world from from this place. Uh, the the gentleman who brought you down here is his eyes are like dinner plates, you know, and uh, and he leads you back up into the sunlight as we're kind of going up the steps i'll ask him you know what's got your guys in a goggle what are you so surprised about it's just what he says is the truth I'll slowly shake my head, you know, as we're kind of approaching the front door of the warehouse. Uh, it's probably by now, what, maybe late afternoon-ish or so. I've been down here for quite a while, hanging out. Uh, as I'm making my way back down the street and, you know, kind of passing through one of these choke point areas, you know, I will keep looking back, you know. I'm a little bit wary, you know, eyes in the alley. I'm a little bit stunned that he knew I was coming. So I'm kind of trying to slowly pull this together because it's too much for it to just be a coincidence. And information couldn't have gotten down here fast enough to someone from a stool pigeon to let them know I was on my way, more or less, whether or not they knew I was where I was going. You didn't know that's where you were going. 
No, I did not know really that's where I was going. The place was chosen at random. You wandered around looking for some guys who needed help. Yep. There's no way it could have been planned. Ahead of time, anyway. At least based on real world information. I'm a little shocked at and and still uncertain, very uncertain. Try and find a trolley car, get back to my car, do a check-in at the at the department. Wearing the clothes from the street this time, not the fine <laughs> dress. Uh that right. the guy saw me in the first time. So Bill's still there. Bill's always there. Bill, how long you got until you retire? Oh. You gonna retire before that chair you're sitting in does? Yeah, he pulls out his pulls out his pocket watch. He says, "Any minute now." What today is the last day? No. <laughs> <laughs> I smile. Don't break Start the kinda... illusion. Uh, organizing my notes, uh, sit down at the desk, kind of pull some of these notes together about uh, Troy McAllister, the basement area, these two individuals, uh, the tattoos, Xavier Morgan. Okay, you're putting these with your original notes, your original folder? Putting these with my original notes, kind of looking at the map too to see if I can get an idea of where on the map this location is at and its relation to say the new favorite morgan's place and where it's at in the pier you know doing like i say you know doing the usual legwork uh sure. to piece some of these tools together in a visual and notes wise yeah it's not hard you know to put a, a pin in the map at the, the right place uh, not too far right. away Okay. With that being said, you know, I'll uh, tidy the desk up a little bit. I'm not OCD uh, at my <laughs> office desk, but uh, right. kind of look around at the walls and see how bad it is in here. Well, there's a lot of back. unsolved. Yeah. Well, not really unsolved cases. There's an awful lot of information about the one overarching case that being the O'Shaughnessy's and all this new information about the Morgans which is not or very lack, much yeah or a I lack, say of the lack of information thereof so as you so as you, as you, you tidy the desk right and in the the fold over cover of your ink blotter you know where the green felt slips under the oh yeah 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 the, the leather edge uh there's a tarot card. Okay. And it is a... It's the same figure that he tapped before. So there's a, a, a sword motif. And, you know, if you were to find a book on tarot, you could, of course, look up what it is and okay. what it means. But I asked Bill if he's playing some kind of joke on me. He looks up from a file he's reading. He says, no, I don't like you that much. I hold up the card. You see who brought Neat. this in? Uh, I, I don't know. It could have been. It could have been anybody. Uh, not me. It's what is that? Is that? I kind of slowly start walking towards him. Bill, there ain't many people that are going to be coming in and out of a treasury room. Well, there were no deliveries. You didn't get any mail. It goes, no, you're playing a joke on me. And it's, I don't, I'm not smart enough to get it. And he's pointing at the card, right? Yeah. So why would you even pay for something like that? Didn't pay for anything. Just found it on my desk. 
Right. I found some kind of like fortune teller card with my own face on it. I look at the card. Is it really kind of my face? Yeah. Go over and look in the mirror. It's your face. Okay. I got to get out of here, Bill. This place is driving me crazy. I look around at the files stacked up over the place. (laughs) Don't die in an avalanche tonight, Bill. Okay? I'll see you in the morning. Don't take away all my hope. I could die in an avalanche tonight. Make my way down to the car and head back to the house. All right. Kind of thinking about this card. Thinking so about she Xavier. Pull, is, yeah. She pull into the driveway <laughs> and you're thinking about the card. You're thinking about Xavier. You pull into the driveway. There's a voice and it really can't come from anywhere else but your face on that card. It just says, The man's in the world of satisfaction. And I'll close the curtain on this session for tonight. (laughs) Okay. You can matter. Oh. I think I got everything. Oh, jeez. Okay. How'd that work for you? Huh? (laughs) How did that work for you? (laughs) It was interesting. Uh, Just doing a little tidy in here real quick. No, it's good. Uh, It's a, I I, I like it. It's a good initial session. It's a great first, it was a good first session, you know? How do you, how did you feel about uh, me trying to kind of push where it goes? Um, I don't feel it as, as pushing. Right. So um, one question I'm going to ask before I forget, I asked it to the others and it's, it's a kind of important to me. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. There's a lot of stuff that was related to Thornton's skills. Mm Mm-hmm which I did not ask you to roll for. We only made one roll, which is a spot hidden check. We didn't even make a sanity roll at this point. Right. So how do you feel about the, how do you feel about (laughs) the automatic success? Um, Uh, Well, I mean, you know, we've had these kind of discussions before. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. I know that when, uh, especially in a game like VRP, because of, I know how the mechanic advances, how, uh, the evolution of the character goes, how the skill rolls are made to increase skills and stuff like that, that the reflection of the percentage is really based on, you know, this is not this is why I'm making a roll because at this point it is necessary to make a roll. You know right. what I mean? Um, as long as you're comfortable with providing a certain level of information. And, and I know at some point, you know, uh, you'll make a call. Okay, well, you've got a drive auto 45%. Okay. You're trying to follow somebody in a car. There's going to be a point where you're going to say, okay, this really isn't a 40% chance or less. Right. And so for me, the task switching between playing the character and rolling to mechanics isn't that hard um, because I know it's going to come. Uh, I'm always interested knowing what character skills I have. That's why I was like trying to push the psychology skill a little bit. Right. Saying, how far will you let me go with asking this kind of a question? When is that 60% really going to be rolled? So that was me kind of like investigating what kind of call you would make on it. Right. Uh, So it's over a little slightly more than 50%, but still not that great. But what we didn't have in any situation was real time pressure or urgency. It's not like someone is bleeding out and needing to be calmed or yeah. um, you've got to figure out 
is the gambler across the table from you going to lay down his cards or pull out a derringer? You know, it's not that mm. kind of situation. So there's a lot of, at 55%, you are in the professional range. Yeah. If you wanted to be 100% certain that someone was telling you the truth, it's not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and there but... were some things like, that I were I was doing through the narration to to not put myself in a position to make a skill roll. I'm not trying to skulk around the alleys. I'm not trying <laughs> right, to... exactly. Because I know the limitations of the character. So that's, you know, my ability to play within what I know he can do. I mean, what was it my the character's well, he doesn't have a he doesn't have you know, have a hide skill. He doesn't have a sneak right. skill. This isn't, you know, spot hidden in that respect is the investigative part I've got. So I'm not, yeah, so, I'm not so in, in broad daylight, you're not going to try and yeah, hide. I'm not going to try and hide, you know. But you might try it at night where you would yeah, have exactly. bonuses. Some, advantage, so. some, some, kind of, some kind of advantage. Right. Uh, so so to answer your question you know, about uh, driving where things go, um, the, the real answer is that I don't have a, a destination for you to go to as a character yeah whereas well, i'm not idea. i'm not giving you a bunch of clues that that lead to a plot yeah uh, i have an awareness of this week uh, in in boston time things that have happened that yeah. that you'd hear about you became interested in in a thing yeah so if you had ignored Steve Allwell, <laughs> right, then I imagine we would have ended up in the treasury office at some point because that's work, yeah. right? So you'd go yeah. to work where you'd meet, you know, Bill Rayner, who might now be my current favorite NPC for many years. There's, he... I had an image of him in my mind, and when he came out of my mouth, he was this totally different dude that I I am totally in love with right now. <laughs> That's a character to play. <laughs> but, well, you, uh, you got to have a supporting role, right? That's uh, that's probably my favorite GM NPC is the the guy who is actually willing to play a supporting cast character. Uh, you know, somebody's got to play those. You know, <laughs> but I, so, I'm not really when I talk about driving kind of what's going on. But more or less trying to say, okay, uh, push what I think is the intentional direction the character would go in. Like I, I'm, right. I'm familiar enough with our play styles that uh, I know you're not like an A, B, C, and D. You're more like a really wide guardrails, you know. Uh, but and there was, I kind of got that feeling too. Like okay, so when you were asking, you know, are you going to go here? Are you going to go there? kind of like you could see where I wanted to go or where these things were starting to form, but uh, being, being given the leeway to just kind of say, okay, well, this is where my character is going next. And this is where my character is going next kind of often gets interpreted as, you know, I'm the one who's pushing the story. Sorry to say that word. I'm the one who's pushing the direction of the narrative and, and things like that. But I think it's a play style that we're both kind of really familiar with. You know, right. we know what the game is about. We know the theme. We know the the type of narratives that are told. Uh, so there is kind of a certain amount of freedom that you can get by staying within those guardrails, right? Yeah. But there will always be some kind of situation like we encountered tonight where there is no way to express in character a thing like how how certain am I that I'm being recruited into a cult right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I, yeah. I could at some point offer that to you as like the voice of your subconscious. And we were getting pretty close at the point where you asked the question is the point where I'm saying, this is starting to feel like, you know, the, the party line of the treasury agency of the welcome yeah. to Harvard. You're now <laughs> one of the elite, you know, it's starting to set, you know, it's very familiar. That doesn't, brain. that doesn't guarantee that, that you, the player, would get what I'm talking about either. So, yeah. so it's, it's, uh, 
It's interesting. So we were on the same wavelength. We're both thinking the same thoughts at the same time. It's like, wait a minute, this is this sounds like church. <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh, what do you think of the in character play? Well, it's 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 my default. You know, like I can remember back to my to my first sessions. Of, you know, of course we had to stop to ask what do I roll here and, and which die is which, cause I didn't even have a set of dice, you know, but still communicating in character. Yeah. Um, and the purpose of play was imagine that you were in the situation, right? Not you're the hero of the story, but right. You live in that world mm -hmm. and you can explore. That's, that's, that's how I see role playing games. And so when we can play like this, right. Without, <laughs> Uh, other considerations, it feels normal to me. Now, if we had been playing Star Trek Adventures, which I also really enjoy, right, then we would enjoy moments of in-character play and we would enjoy moments of figuring out the die pools and deciding what's the appropriate momentum spend and, and how that's going to lead into this scene and which character, you know, there's a, a lot of authorial stuff that we could also enjoy, but that's a, a learned appreciation for me rather than my default setting. Yeah. That makes sense. I guess what I'm, what I'm kind of more or less asking, because I, I know we're both kind of familiar with this play style is from the person who's on that side of the screen who has an appreciation for it how well did it come off well in, in oh. most games right because usually the question is the gm yeah. says well what did you think about my game yeah yeah, this yeah. Is more like the player asking the gm how well do you think i did playing the character right did he the, did he uh, come through yeah i think he's interesting i think he's interesting and um in this arrangement using brp because i know it well and because it'll it gives me tools so i can assess whether or not i need to call for a role or call for some kind of disruptive moment or use the system mm -hmm. i end up getting to play people more often like more fully in a scene yeah. which allows me to interact with characters and not be separate from them as a non-entity in in the world right and the other part of this is that uh, in some scenes i'm able to just be the voice of the character's senses and understanding yeah i don't have to say you know he goes to the to the water yeah, filter for a and, second. and it's right. first second third person i don't have to do any of that stuff i can just kind of interact with you as a part of your own senses and that's that's also pretty satisfying it's pretty you know an immersive feeling so i had a clear How, sense of yeah. who thornton was right yeah. and i oh he made me sad right so how so we've got the depression right yeah rich guy and he doesn't want to go in the family business he doesn't want to you know be a part of the family fortune in that way right he's not loved by peers right he keeps making these decisions that people look down on right people that he's grown up with people that would be important would be family friends associates they look down on these decisions and you know he's in one of the at the in this period of time is one of the most hated professions <laughs> either yeah. they don't trust you because you're dirty or you know they they don't trust you because you know you're you're the you're the g yeah you're the g man right so uh I just I I just pictured night after night being in the boxing gym with maybe in the back of his head some kind of dream about being a 
a great boxer, but there being some physical limitations, right? But he's a great yeah. coach. He's a great training partner. He's a great sparring partner. You can learn so much from this guy, like how to slip a punch. Oh, he's just amazing. You should, you know, it's like music watching him, right? But you will never be the Golden Gloves champion of, no. right? So that made me sad. Going to the Treasury Department, I kind of felt like, you know, have gun, will travel. I'm paladin. You know, I we're going to, we're going to take back the city. And then he's working with <laughs> Bill Rayner, who's, <laughs> who's, <laughs> who's, you know, contemplating suicide uh, from nine to five and then goes home to his wife and kids, you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. It just, there's just these broken pieces of sadness and uh, it made the character really kind of come to life for me in that way. Well, and it's, it's kind of funny. You have that feeling about the boxing and the, and that, cause that's kind of when I was putting together a character together, uh, the, when you saw the other two, that was kind of how it, he, how he evolved. It was either going to be the, the starving artist or, you know, the total G man type, but, right. Uh, but he works better together as an amalgam. He works, but he works really well together. And, and a, a lot of it has to do with the, the stats that were rolled because the way you describe the character uh, narratively compared to its math, it works out great as far as the character concept. And yeah. I don't, I didn't, in, I didn't think I was going to come off sad <laughs> <laughs> as far as the character goes, but uh <laughs> It's definitely, I mean, it's there on the sheet. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they, there's nothing there on the sheet for you to really look at, but it is. Right. You know, there's there really is part of that story looking at where the skills got spent, you know, between the physicality of the character and his mental abilities. Right. You know, he didn't focus so much on law. He didn't focus on logic so much, the math and accounting. But as far as trying to understand how the world works and talk his way through it, that was really what was part of the character. Because that's where the, aside from the credit rating uh, right. and dodge, those are the next two highest skills on the character sheet. Right. Um, I mean, I really did try to to use that language to keep it focused on, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going here. I didn't want to say... Alex then turns around and heads to the door. You know, it's like saying Bob right. Dole does. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a lot easier now. I mean, it's definitely something over the last couple of years that it's just a way of playing now to to say I, I, I. Right. Yeah. And, and it's kind of interesting, right? Like there's a there's a period of play where I think and or there's there's preferences of play where it can be really important that the other people are imagining what you are imagining. Yeah. So I could say, I go to the door. Or I could say, I turn angrily, my coat swirling around my ankles and stride to the door. Yeah. Right. Or I could be even more descriptive to remind people of important details like a silver pin or, you know, a flash of eye color or, you know, whatever. Right. We can. Mm -hmm. Or we can just let it go and say, I walk to the door and, and everybody's imagining the character walking to the door. That always remains true in every. Yeah. Right. In every imagination. No matter what, no matter what kind of flourish you put on it. I mean, the basic action is still there. Yeah. You know, the hard part is, and it's kind of that improvisational thing, especially when trying to play a game, is trying to say it, but not. <laughs> sound just total cliche or yes. uh, to try and say something within to try and say it within the genre to try and say it within the theme um, without overdoing the language you know the right. squamish moody <laughs> ambivalence of evil in the universe that could be called of Cthulhu uh, like for example you know one of the things I I jot it down and I always do this is try and grab some jargon you know what was what was the language that was used uh like buzzer for your nose and things like yeah. that you know 
uh, yeah, just to be able to kind of, yeah, <laughs> to be able to at, le at least use something that's within the era and the genre. And those things, things, those things build, right? It gets yeah. easier and easier to use them as you, it, it, the, 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 more you the more you develop your fluency, right? So as a as a modern man sitting using Zoom, what was it like to go into the underworld and and meet the devil? <laughs> very unsurprising. Very accommodating. Very accommodating. Uh, very yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Very accommodating. Uh, no affrontedness. Given the deception, no, uh, more or less just literally laying the cards out on the table, which literally. that in and of itself <laughs> kind of took me for a back. I was waiting for some occultism to show up and I was wondering where it would be. Right. So that was a very interesting way to, to bring it out. Uh, I, I don't want to get, you know, and this is going to sound terrible, uh, feelings of the chosen one with my face on the card and everything and the cards <laughs> talking to me. And uh, although the idea of Deliatant treasury agent turned cultist does sound appealing. <laughs> uh, your I resume is one... amazing. Yes. <laughs> I track your, yeah, all the way up from forming the boxing club at Harvard to, uh, uh, Lead altar stabbing boy, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Because that's part of, uh, it's always the the being the hero and being being on the side of stopping it from happening, right? Right. The uh, investor Legrand from The Call of Cthulhu. Right. But what happens if the story is sympathetically told from the guy who decides to join right yeah and you know like we we know the o'shaughnessy's are bad men does this guy seem like a bad man yeah. oh the the best form of evil is the way in which it can conceal itself whether it's politically religiously <laughs> or socially right right with a nice thin film of oil to slip away <laughs> right so, so far we have the, as the evidence of evil, we have make work program, yeah. uh, feed, <laughs> feed and clothe the, uh, the Socialist. homeless. <laughs> Who cares about the communists? It's the socialists you really got to worry about. <laughs> That's right. So there I'm you waiting go. for the union to show up now is what, what really I got to find out if it's going to happen. It's the, it's the game masters, Canadian roots that are. That are bleeding through the, the cracks. Of... <laughs> Waiting to sign up for my health care. Uh, yes, you too could have free health care several years after you need it. So given the number of sessions that you've done so far, how do you feel about how things have progressed? Pretty good. Um, there's a part of me that just wants to play, to be honest. Yeah. And it, and there's a part of me that wants to try to help demonstrate how this system matters to this preference in this way. So we play one session like you and I played today, largely mm -hmm. separate from from system. You know, there's a, a couple of times I'm I'm rolling dice down here yeah. to the side. Um like one notable instance of checking your luck <laughs> and uh, uh, that kind of thing. But, uh, but there are other sessions where we have played where it's much more overt. You know, people are asking me questions, uh, you know, that I haven't had time to describe yet or that are more out of character questions about the situation. Uh, there have been moments where we've had to use uh, elements of combat right mm -hmm. and the first time we did combat was very much like this right 
I didn't stop and say, okay, we're going to do combat now. So this is how initiative works in Call of Cthulhu, you know, that kind of stuff. We just kept talking and, uh, and they experienced combat happening. Right. Yeah. Cause it's pretty much, pr uh, easy to flow into. I mean, it's all kind of order preset more or less. Right. It's dex ranks and yeah, and, and uh, there's no fantasy flight, whoosh, 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 roll for initiative you know, kind of thing. Right. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty neat. I know what order people are going in. We don't have to talk about it. Yep. And I ask you what you're doing, right? And if you're faster, it's gonna happen. And if you're slower, it's gonna be noticed and reacted to or ignored or or whatever. And this is all just part of the description. So I really like that part about BRP interactions. But later on in a, in a different session it was much more overtly mechanical okay. and, uh, so these these things are there to be seen and the effect that they have and we have fun throughout because it's it touches on our different our different play styles our different uh, thoughts about play um, but you know maybe it's there to spark conversation or or whatnot no, I think but at, a certain, at a certain point, you know, those that experimentation will stop and then we'll just we'll just play. So we've played uh, four sessions now in the morning uh, will be the fifth for that for that group. And we've had your first session. So that's now six distinct sessions taking place uh, within the same week, yeah. more or less of time. So, yeah, be satisfied. I'm glad you had a good time. Oh, man, I've been looking forward to it. This is I, literally the first time we've actually had a game. Face-to-face? -face. Yeah, face-to-face. Face-to-face, face yeah. Face -face, yeah, air quotes. You'll come to me when you are ready.